video deals with the uh, motion of a satellite of a planet. Um, it could be another object as well, but we'll talk about planets, focus in on that. We have some satellite, and it's in a very, very low orbit. Um, we're going to assume the object it goes around is a circle, so it doesn't hit any mountaintops, um, a smooth circle. And we're going to say the orbit's circular. We're going to uh, derive a relationship between the period of the orbit and the density of the planet. So, and this uh, motivation for doing this, I retired a little while ago, cleaning out uh, my files. I found this, uh, this idea in an email that Gary White had posted on a physics listserv um, so several years ago. But uh, it's good physics, so let's give it a whirl here. So we have some satellite going around uh, the circular planet, and the force of gravity supplies the centripetal force. That's how we get the equation started here. Force of gravity supplies the centripetal force. Though so the force of gravity, just using Newton's law of gravity here, uh, mp is mass of the planet, m sat is mass of the satellite. Here's our formula for centripetal force, mv squared over r and also can make use of the speed in the orbit, the velocity, uh, magnitude, is equal to 2 pi r, the circumference, divided by the time for the orbit, uh, time to go around one time. So you can see here that the mass of the satellite appears on both sides, so this works for small satellites, works for big satellites. Um, and going further, I'm going to square 2 pi r divided by t and replace v squared with that. Um, another uh, algebra step that's going on here is that there's uh, a cancellation of one factor of r from the denominator on both sides. Um, so squaring the v, I have a 4, a pi squared, an r squared divided by t squared. So v squared, the only uh, a factor left on the right side, remaining on the right side, uh, is now 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. If we solve this for t squared, we find you know, there's some other uh, algebra going on here. Uh, multiply both sides by r, divide by both sides by g times the mass of the planet. Um, and now we're going to switch to density. We're going to bring in the density. Um, the density, you know, we'll put it here, density is equal to mass over volume. Density is mass over volume. So our volume of our planet, the planet has a radius r, a sphere has a volume of 4 thirds pi r cubed. So I'm going to divide the numerator by 4 thirds pi r cubed, and I'm going to divide the denominator by 4 thirds pi r cubed. So maintaining the equality. Where does the density come in? Where would you write the density symbol? Well, we've got the mass of the planet divided by the volume. So there's where our density is going to uh, re-enter. And just a little reminder of that. Um, mass of the planet divided by volume. So right here, this is uh, being replaced with just the density. And there are several calculations in the numerator, cancellations in the numerator. Uh, the fours cancel. One factor of pi cancels. The r cubes cancel. I've got a multiplying by r cubed. I've got a dividing by r cubed, so they cancel. So I'd have a one third in a denominator. That we invert and multiply. We get a factor of three on the top. So three pi over g rho. We simplified quite a bit. Um, and taking a square root of both sides, we find that the period, the orbit in seconds, will equal 3 times pi times the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, multiplied by the density in kilograms per cubic meter. We do need standard units uh, for that density. So let's see what uh, we can do a little bit further. The 3 pi divided by the constant of gravitation and take a square root, we get that constant, and then we've got uh, square root of the density underneath. Let's just work this for the Earth. For the Earth, 
we have a mass for the Earth, we have a radius for the Earth. We can calculate its density, the average density. Density is not uniform for the Earth. We're ignoring that here. But, uh, just the average density, mass of the Earth, 4 thirds pi r cubed. I came up with 5,497 kilograms per cubic meter. That sounds about right because this would be uh, roughly 5.5 grams per cubic centimeter. If you uh, take into account there's a factor of 10 to the 6 to go from meter cubed to centimeter cubed and a factor of 1,000 kilograms to gram. So uh, we're more dense than water. Water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter or 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So we've got the density. Let's go ahead and make use of that. Um, our constant that we developed up above divided by square root of uh, 5497. We'll let more of this be visible. Um, and I came up with 5,071 seconds. Divide that by 60. 84.5 minutes, which I know is the correct answer uh, from some other physics problems that are of interest. Um, so there we go. I have it uh, have it out here. And in terms of uh, in hours units, it's a little bit less than an hour and a half. And also from uh, you know hearing about uh, NASA and uh, manned spaceflight, I know this is uh, the period for an orbit. And a low Earth orbit is, is a little bit bigger than this, but uh, this is consistent. Just checking this for reasonableness. So there we have it. Uh, we can express the uh, period of an orbit in seconds as 3.76 times 10 to the fifth divided by the square root of the density. The density does have to be in kilograms per cubic meter. Kilograms per cubic meter. But you could apply this to other planets and uh, feel free to do so. Check your calculations on here before you try another planet. See if you get the same numbers and ask your instructor if you have questions. But force of gravity gives centripetal force. Uh, bringing in the density simplifies our, uh, our symbols. So keep practicing.